This is a limited edition smoked sherry single malt whiskey from one of my favorite Australian distilleries and wineries. They're, they're both, they're, they're a winery and a distillery. Hey guys, I'm Nath Martin, the Whiskey Scribe. I'm a whiskey enthusiast and I love all things whiskey. But taste is subjective and there's a lot of different whiskies out there. So whether you consider yourself a connoisseur or you're just looking to understand more about whiskey, let's explore it all together. If you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you do enjoy this video, please do give it a like. It really does help me out. Morris Whiskey was started by Morris Wines of Rutherglen. Now they're internationally known for producing award-winning fortified wines. Now, I've spoken a bit about their history before and how they came to be making whiskey, so I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. You can actually see that video here. But this is genuinely one of my favorite Australian distilleries. I've never been disappointed with any of their releases. I recommend them to other whiskey lovers all the time, and I stand by those recommendations. They make good whiskey that isn't drastically overpriced. So let's talk about the smoked sherry. Now, this is whiskey that's been aged in casks that held the Morris Wines 10-year-old Amber Apera. And Apera is the name we have to use here in Australia for sherry because if it's not made in the correct Spanish Andalusia region of Spain, you can't call it sherry. So what we make here in Australia, it's technically sherry, but we call it a para. But the name protection only works on the wines. So it means when you put a whiskey in the barrel, you can call the barrel a sherry barrel. You just can't call the wine that came out of it sherry. Technicalities. But for all intents and purposes, this is whiskey that has spent time aging in 10 year old sherry casks and then finished in heavily charred barrels. So this was a collaboration. They, they worked with their Cooper to produce this and they produced these fantastically charred barrels to give an element of smoke to a whiskey that was already doing well. They already have a sherry cask out there, which is really well received. And so this is adding an extra dimension to that, or at least that's the point. We'll find out in a sec. So these charred barrels are hand toasted at the Morris Wines own cooperage by their head cooper, Anton Remkes? Remkes. Anton. We'll say by their head cooper, Anton. But the result is meant to be a marriage of impressive dried citrus sherry notes with a lingering smoky finish. Now, this is actually a similar process to their smoked musket barrels. So they've got a part of their core range is musket barrel whiskey. And they've also got, they had a limited release of smoked musket, which was this, the same sort of thing, aged in musket barrels and then finished in heavily charred barrels to give it that smoky element. And I've tasted both of those and just mm, chef's kiss, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. And that extra smoke element just really added something to those musket barrels, which is part of the reason why I'm so excited about this. Uh, Morris Whiskey did actually send me this bottle in order to review it. This isn't a paid promotion. Um, I'm still gonna review the whiskey honestly and give you my honest opinion of what I think of it. But yeah, I'm already really excited for it. But this one has been bottled at 50% ABV. Now, it, the core range from Morris Whiskey is not chill filtered, but I do recall that the, the smoked musket barrel was mildly chill filtered in order to just sort of like filter out a little bit of the astringent notes that came from those heavily charred barrels. It doesn't say anywhere on here whether that's the case, but if they did that for the musket barrel, the smoked musket, and this is a very similar process, I wouldn't be surprised if it is lightly chill filtered, but I know that their core range doesn't usually do that, so if they have done it, it's probably only just to the minimum level that they needed to. Um, and for all I know, it hasn't actually been chill filtered. So take that with a grain of salt or a splash of whiskey. So just looking at the appearance on that. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the uh, the standard sherry cast to compare it to, but this is definitely a darker color than what you get from that sherry cast. That sherry cast has got, it sort of, it leans more towards the golden sort of color. Whereas this, it definitely has like a little bit more of a brown element. And I'm looking at this up against the light. I don't know how well you can see it here on the video, but those legs are thick. 
Now, I've met Darren Pike, the head distiller for Morris Whiskey, and he's a really big fan of making sure that the whiskey they produce has got a lot of those oily congeners just to carry across the flavor. And you can just, the legs on this thing are so thick. It's got, it's got thunder thighs. I'm really enjoying that nose. Ooh, one thing that I didn't really expect, I was expecting like a, a slightly different nose to the sherry cask, but in putting that straight, at the same time as getting very similar notes to their sherry barrel, I'm getting that layer of smoke on top. And then the more, the more you nose that, this marriage of the two aromas come together and produce these other notes. So you've got sort of like this, this sort of almost zesty sort of citrus fruits in there that come from that sherry cask. And there's definitely an element of charred wood smoke. But somewhere in the middle, you've got these, they're not poached fruits. It's more like, um, it's more like if you're cooking with something citrusy, like um, ginger even. That's quite, <sighs> there's this zesty element there in the middle where that sherry cask and the, and the charred oak come together. Mm. Slange. Wow. That charred smoke is really prevalent at the start there. And I usually find when you're, when you're tasting a sherry cask whiskey, it still tastes like whiskey. But after that smoke sort of moves aside to a little bit, the first flavor you actually get is, is a para, like an Australian a para aged in a warm climate. And then it's sort of moving across to provide some of those buttery, biscuity sort of notes that comes from their whiskey. There's a lot in there. I'm getting some of the kinds of herbs that you would put into almost like a mulled wine. So it's kind of, kind of like nutmeg or cloves, maybe not quite cloves. But yeah, there's even a bit of burnt butter in there. So the burnt butter flavor, the way that's coming across is almost kind of like, um, if you've ever made shortbread and you've cooked it a little bit too long, not to the point that it's burnt, but where it's just a little bit browner than what it's meant to be, but it still tastes good. That's that sort of burnt butter flavor that I'm getting in there. It's kind of, yeah, like slightly overcooked Scottish shortbread. But on the fruity side, well, there's still an element of zest. It sort of moved a little bit away from citrus. So I'm getting kind of more, maybe grape. But yeah, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, normally when you have smoke, if you're typically a, a Scottish whiskey fan, most of that smoke tends to come across from peat. This is very much not a peat smoke. It, it's definitely a charred wood. It's like, it's kind of like the campfire the next day where it still smells nice, but it's not smoke. It's just what remains of the wood there on the fire. But it's infused with all these sort of fruit characteristics. It's, but that, the finish, it lingers there. Yeah, legitimately, it is like fruit, almost like fruit that's been on a campfire overnight and you'll smell it the next day where it's not smoky, it's, well, it's not smoking, but it's still, it has that smoky sort of note to it. You can smell the wood, you can smell the fruit. It's remaining on the back of the palate. And it's almost like this little, there's this little pinch at the back and I think I would call that clove. This is a really interesting addition to the sherry cask, but there is one other experiment I want to do. So I said that this might, might be chill filtered slightly. Now this is 50% ABV. So theoretically, if this hasn't been chill filtered and you add a drop of ice cube in there, given how oily this is, it should go cloudy. I don't want to add ice to it, but I also just want to see. 
Now I haven't spoken too much about ice on this channel before. If you like whiskey on ice, by, by all means fine, do that. I don't like adding ice because I do prefer the, the full flavor palette that you get from the whiskey itself without it being watered down with ice. But if you do want ice with your whiskey, you can do that, but do yourself a favor and just try it neat first because you can't go backwards and it's kind of, it's almost like trying soup in a restaurant before adding salt. It might be just what you want before you add the ice. Just give it a go. As much as this hurts me, I'm just really curious. For the sake of science, let's just... It is going a little bit cloudy. And I'll give it this to adding the ice cube in there. It does sort of separate the smoke and the fruit notes a little bit more. So the fruit is getting a little bit fresher. The smoke is still there. Look, it still tastes nice on ice. I just, I would prefer it neat, but judging by the fact that it still went a little bit smoky, they either haven't chill filtered this or they've only done it a little bit as they did with the, uh, the smoked musket barrel. So that's good to know. Yeah, it's not bad with ice. It's just, it's better without. Okay, so keep in mind, this is a limited release. It even, look, it says at the top here on the label, limited edition. So much like the smoked musket, it's only gonna be out for a limited time. Once they all sell out, they're all gone. The smoked musket is already sold out because it was, like I said, it was fantastic. So if you do want to try this, get in now. There are some great specials on it at the moment because we're in the lead up to Christmas. You can get a few bundles and things where you get the smoked sherry and the standard sherry for as a bundle. Um, great Christmas gift idea. Any, any single malt drinker is not going to be disappointed with a bottle from Morris. Seriously, if you want to get me a Christmas present, just think of a Morris whiskey. That'd be great. But one thing Morris does tend to do well is if a limited release is really well received, they will end up making it part of their standard lineup. So I know they released the Tokay Barrel initially as part of the Whiskey Club, and they did a version of it as part of their core range because it was so well received when it was released through the Whiskey Club. So fingers crossed, if this one sells well and gets lots of good reviews, I'll add it to their core range because it's a beautiful whiskey and I'd love to come back to it multiple times. Um, I know, otherwise maybe I need to stockpile. Great Christmas gift idea in the lead up to Christmas. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. It really does help me out. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. And until next time, enjoy what's in your glass and slash.